Hi, welcome to this five-hour course. My name is Javier Cerviña. I am working at the Technical University of Madrid as one of the five-hour developers. In this course, you will learn to use five-hour account to create users, organizations, and register your applications. You will also learn how to authenticate users in your web apps with their credentials on Fiverr using the second version of the OAuth standard, so that your users will securely access their resources thanks to the authorization management developed in Fiverr. This course is divided into six classes. The first one is a theoretical introduction of what Fiverr account is and other components are, what protocols they use and what you, what you can do with them. The rest of the classes are demos that you can repeat to understand better how to extend your applications to authenticate users in Fiverr. In the second class, for example, we will learn to use Fiverr account to register users, to create organizations, to manage roles of these users into these organizations, and so on. The third one, in the third one, we will show you how to modify an existing web application to authenticate your users with their username and password in Fiverr account. Then we will do the same from non-web applications, we can call them for example native applications, using the same standard and the same components. In class number 5, we will also change the backend of our application to secure requests to our APIs. Doing so, only apps used by the authenticated users will be able to make requests to our service. And finally, we will authorize also the access to our resources, using the roles in Fiverr account to define who is allowed to access to resources that are more restricted. So, to introduce Fiverr account, I will show you a similar product. I bet you all have used Gmail at some point and probably you also own an account. Most of you have used Google Drive, also known as Google Docs, or Google Cal Calendar, or so on. From my experience, there are not so many people that know what Google account is. It's a service that you use every time you authenticate in in a meeting in Google Calendar or uh, in any Google service. When you connect to your Gmail, Gmail account or edit a document in Google Drive, these services redirect you to Google account and you will put there your credentials if you weren't authenticated yet. So in Fiverr we are using the same mechanism introducing Fiverr account. There are already lot of applications that are using this component to authenticate their users. Probably some of you have already used the Cloud Portal, Wild Cloud Store, the Contest Broker and so on. In that case, you have already registered in Fiverr account. But there are apps outside Fiverr that are also using it to authenticate users and access generic enablers. In this course, we will learn how to create these applications. Basically, Fiverr account is a service to manage users, authenticate, unauthorize them, and manage organizations. The resources we can manage are users, which represent people in the real world, organizations that are a group of users, and roles that represent a set of permissions of users in their organizations. Finally, there are applications that are third-party services that, that want to access protected resources that belong to the users. Typically, users register themselves in the service, they create their organizations, and they assign roles to other users in these organizations. Fiverr account is the first door that offers applications to access users' protected information. This information can be stored in the same Fiverr account, such as, for example, the email, the username, the date of birth, and so on, or in other generic enablers as well. This, this access is handled in a trusted environment using the OAuth 2.0 standard. In, this is a widely used standard, that, and there are plenty of libraries and different programming languages that are full compliant with it. In this URL, you can find many of these libraries. Now we'll, so we'll see how this standard works and what is 
it is used nowadays. OAuth two to two is widely used by many, many, many well-known services in the internet. For example, Facebook, Google, Twitter, GitHub, LinkedIn, all of them are using OAuth as OAuth providers. And there are also a lot of applications that are uh, that are OAuth clients that allow us to authenticate using our accounts in these services in Facebook, in Twitter, and so on. Now, Fireware is another OAuth provider that you can use to authenticate your users. OAuth 2.0 proposes a mechanism to provide applications access to protected resources without sharing users' credentials. To do so, applications use access tokens issued by OAuth providers to access these resources because these access tokens represent the user. OAuth 2.0 is designed to be used with HTTP requests. And there are four different players. The resource owner, which typically is the user who wants to grant access to a protected resource. The resource server is the place where the resource is hosted. The client is the application that access the protected resource on behalf of the resource owner using these access tokens. And the authorization server is the service that issues access tokens to the clients. OAuth 2.0 can be used in four different scenarios. These scenarios imply different messages to exchange the access token and they depend on the nature of the client that requests this access token. I will explain you the architecture of these scenarios in Fiverr. The first one is the authorization code grant. This scenario is the most representative in the second version of OAuth. In this case, a user grants an OAuth provider, typically a web application, access to his protected resources using an OAuth provider. The OAuth consumer has to be previously registered in the OAuth provider to establish a trust relationship between them. To grant the access, the client first redirects the user web browser to the OAuth provider. There, the user authenticates and tells the provider to allow the consumer to access his resources. The provider sends a response code to the user's browser if he authenticates and redirects his browser back to the OAuth consumer, which retrieves this response code. It will use this response code in the credential and the credentials obtained when the consumer registers in the provider. And if these credentials are right, then the OAuth provider will generate the access token and it will send it to the OAuth consumer. From this point, the consumer will be able to access users' resources in the server resource using the access token. The second scenario is the implicit grant. This scenario differs from the previous one in which the OAuth consumer doesn't implement a programmatic logic at the backend. We can think of it as an Apache running static HTML pages. In this case, all the logic of the client runs in the user's web browser, like for example, a JavaScript application. And in this case, the first three steps represent the same browser redirection we saw in the previous scenario. But then, during user authentication, the OAuth provider, in the OAuth provider, the browser will send also the consumer identifier. With this info, the provider will generate directly the access token and it will issue it to the user's browser. The difference is that the previous scenario it generated a response code that was later used by the consumer to retrieve the final access token. Now, the access token is directly generated in this step, and the web browser will send it to the OAuth consumer through the second redirection. At this point, then, the OAuth consumer will use it to access restricted resources of the user. So, the next scenario is the resource owner power, uh, password credentials grant. Its main difference is that the user doesn't use a web browser to access the OAuth consumer. 
So it will send his credentials in Fiverr to the OAuth consumer. In this case, the user should trust the OAuth consumer because it will use his private credentials to retrieve the access token. Once obtained it from the OAuth provider, it will use the access token as, as usual. Okay, this scenario is called the client credentials grant because there are no users. Here, the OAuth consumer will authenticate itself to access its own resources at the resource owner. So in this case, once its own credentials are sent to the OAuth provider, it will answer with the access token, and then the OAuth consumer will use it to access its resources. Okay, so once our application, which is an OAuth consumer, obtains this access token, there are different type of resources we can access on behalf of the user in Fiverr. Let's see we, what we can do with it. The first thing we would like to do is to access information about the user, such as the email, the username, and so on. We'll do it by making this request to the Fiverr account, which is the OAuth provider. And in the URL, we should put the access token we obtain during OAuth negotiation. We'll also access different generic enablers, such as the contest broker, by using access token in an authorization HTTP header. This is how OAuth standard specifies to send this access token. But we are also able to access other resources providers that are using Fiverr or deploy, deploy our own APIs that take the most of this component. To do so, there is an open source tool that you can use to secure your APIs that is called the pep proxy. This tool is a proxy that will redirect only those requests that bring a valid access token in the authorization header. It will validate these tokens against the Fiverr account. In the case of the cloud generic enablers, we follow a different authentication mechanism. In this case, we'll need what we call a scoped token to access users' cloud resources. This scoped token is related only to an organization which the user belongs to. So, first, we need to obtain a list of organizations of the user by making the first request. This is the same step we use to access private user information, and we obtain it from Fiverr account. Then our application will decide which organization it will, it will use and it will send this organization together with the access token within the, the scope token request. This request is sent to the Keystone Proxy component, which will generate an scoped token if the access token is valid and if the user ha has access to this organization. Then, once we have the scoped token, we will be able to access users' cloud resources with it. For example, we can make requests to obtain virtual machines of the user in that organization or access the files the user has stored in the cloud, and so on. To do so, we need to use the corresponding APIs of these services. I encourage you to do the corresponding courses in the Firewall e-learning platform. Okay, to summarize, we've seen what Firewall account is, how you can use it to create your identify, in Fiverr and how your applications can, can take advantage of it to authenticate Fiverr users and access their restricted resources. If you want to learn more about Fiverr account, you can see the related documentation in the slide. And I put here also the OAuth specification in Fiverr account. And you, you can also download the Fiverr pep proxy to secure your own APIs. So in the next classes, we'll, we'll say a, see a demonstration of the use of Fiverr account and how we can adapt our applications to this environment. To do so, we will play the role of a geek blogger, which want other users to read his posts through Fiverr. So first, he will register in Fiverr he will see that there are no organizations related with blogs and he will create a new one where he will invite other geeks. 
will see how users that are not logged in in Fireware will not be able to access the blog, while those who, who are logged in will see the post. And finally, we will also see how to give special permissions to some users that will be able to write posts in the blog, while other gig users will only be able to view their posts. So, thank you for attending this class. On the next one, we will start using Fiverr account to create users, organizations, and so on. Bye.